Hey guys, it's Miss Calvary, and I hope that you all are having um, an okay time with all of your distance learning and your Google Classrooms and getting all your assignments turned in. Um, I miss seeing all of you in the hallways and in your classrooms and getting to see the cool things that are going on. Um, but I hope that you all are staying healthy and that you've got everything you need for school. This um, week, I get to read a story to you. Um, I used to read this to my students when I taught in the classroom. And this is called, What If You Had Animal Hair? And it's by Sandra Markle. She's written several books similar to this topic. So if you're interested, um, if you like her book, I recommend that you go um, see if you can find some more of them. And the illustrations are really cool. They're by Howard McWilliam. What if one day when you woke up, the hair on your head wasn't yours? What if overnight a wild animal's hair grew in instead? Oh my word. Sometimes the pages take a little while to load. My internet is kind of slow. Here we go. This first one's going to be a polar bear. And I hear that internet at y'all's houses are, is kind of slow, too. All right. A polar bear has a double coat of hair to keep it warm. There's a woolly undercoat close to the bear's skin. Above that is a top coat made of six inch long, stiff, oil coated hairs. A polar bear's hair looks as white as the Arctic snow because the top coat hairs are hollow and clear. They reflect the light just like snow. Fact, each May or June, a polar bear sheds its hair and grows a whole new coat in less than a month. If you had polar bear hair on your head, you could play outdoors in cold, wet weather and never need a hat. I wish in Texas we had snow and you know cold weather so you could experience that. Reindeer. A reindeer has a double coat, too. It also has a lot of hair. Sorry, that is my dog. Can you hear him? He's playing with his toy. A reindeer has a double coat, too. It has a lot of hair, as many as 5,000 outer hairs per square inch of skin. Each long, stiff outer hair has a hollow core. These hairs trap air. In addition to keeping the reindeer warm, its hair helps this heavy animal float in the water. Fact, a reindeer's hollow hair keeps its body heat from escaping. In fact, if a reindeer lies on the ground, the snow under it doesn't melt. If you had reindeer hair, swimming would always be easy, even in the roughest of waters, because you would float. It's pretty cool. Musk ox. A musk ox has the longest hair of any wild animal. Some hairs are as long as two feet. That's 24 inches. Its shaggy coat hangs down to its hooves. This coat is also double thick and so tough it acts like a suit of armor. Fact, each spring a musk ox sheds its woolly undercoat as much as seven pounds of hair. Guys, that's like the size of a newborn baby. Every year it sheds that much hair. If you had musk ox hair, you could play outside day or night, in winter or summer, without worrying about frostbite sunburn, or bug bites. Would that not be nice not to have to deal with mosquito bites? Oryx. A scimitar horned oryx has hair that is just right for its African desert home. The oryx's pale colored coat reflects in sunlight and keeps it from overheating. The hairs are also short, so short that any cool breeze easily reaches its skin. Fact. Oryx calves are born with, uh, with solid yellow coats. They develop distinctive markings and pale and white and red coats as they grow up. If you had scimitar, orned, oh, scimitar horned oryx hair, that's a mouthful, you'd never need a comb or a brush. Even if you rolled on the ground, your hair would be too short to tangle or collect dirt. Lion. A male lion has a mane, long, thick hair on the back of its head, neck, and shoulders. When it comes to having a mane, size matters. Scientists learned that female lions, called lionesses, prefer males with big manes. That could be because the healthiest males usually have the largest manes. Fact, 
A lion's mane needs regular cleaning and grooming. Luckily, a group of lions called a pride will groom one another. These big cats have built in a built-in comb, their rough tongues. If you had a lion's mane, you'd stand out in the crowd. You'd look big and bold. Zebra. A zebra's hair grows in black and white stripes. These stripes help it stay safe. Whether standing still or running, zebras usually stick together in a herd. Seeing so many stripes confuses hunters such as lions and hyenas. A zebra's hair shows if Sorry, I should have said fact so you know where I am. Fact. A zebra's hair shows if it's healthy or sick. The short hair on a healthy zebra's mane stands up straight. A sick zebra's mane flops over to the side. If you had zebra hair, you wouldn't have to work at being one of a kind. Each zebra has a stripe pattern that's completely unique, which is like our fingerprints. Like no other person in the world has fingerprints just like yours. No two zebras have the same stripe pattern. That is pretty cool. Three-toed sloth. A three-toed sloth's hair often looks green, gross, because little plants called algae grow all over it. Sloths live in damp rainforests and rarely move, making their bodies a good place for algae to live. However, having green hair isn't a bad thing. Green hair helps sloths blend into their homes in the treetops and hide from predators such as jaguars and harpy eagles. Fact, three-toed sloths spend most of their lives upside down, so their hair grows differently than other hairy animals. When a three-toed sloth hangs upside down, its hair falls over its body. So even upside down, the sloth's hair keeps its skin dry when it rains. If you had three-toed sloth hair, you'd never be alone. Because of the algae, your hair would be home to many different kinds of harmless insects. Ooh. Arctic fox. This one's one of my favorites. An arctic fox's hair is snow white in winter. Each hair is also fat, helping make its coat thick and warm. As the days grow longer and heat up, an arctic fox sheds its wintertime hair and grows a new brown coat. New... Uh, now each hair is skinny, helping make its coat thin and keeping the fox from overheating. Besides staying comfortable, changing its coat keeps an arctic fox perfectly colored to sneak up on prey such as lemmings and voles. Fact, when getting ready for winter, arctic foxes also grow long hair between their toes and on the soles of their feet. Their furry feet help them run on ice without slipping. If you had arctic fox hair, you'd never get tired of your hair color because it would change with the season. So like here in the winter, you can see it turns white. And then when it's not in the winter, it turns brown. That's pretty cool. Giant pangolin. A giant pangolin's body is covered with scales, which consist of the same substance as hair. Like hair, the scales are made of tough keratin to grow and grow out of the skin. A giant pangolin scales also start small and grow longer until at last they fall out. New scales grow in to replace the ones that are lost. Fact, the back edges of a giant pangolin's scale-like hairs are razor sharp. So if it's attacked, a giant pangolin just curls up tight to stay safe. If you had giant pangolin scales, you wouldn't need to put on a helmet to ride your bike. Sorry, my dog wants up here. A porcupine has a normal coat, but it also has special hairs called quills. Quills are stiff, needle-like hairs. If attacked, barbs on the end of each quill poke into the enemy's skin. Then, even when they separate, the porcupine's quills stay stuck in the enemy. Fact, a porcupine's skin gives off a fatty substance that coats each quill. This fatty substance contains a germ-killing chemical, so if a porcupine accidentally pokes itself, it won't get an infection. If you had a porcupine's quills, bullies would never bother you. Look at that bully over there behind him. Isn't that funny? Ooh, this one looks really gross. Star-nosed mole. A star-nosed mole's hair, unlike most animal hair, can lie flat in any direction. Push forward, sideways, or straight back, its hair will never stick up. It will always lie flat against its body. 
This lets a star-nosed mole slip easily through its underground tunnels, whether it's going forward or backing up. Fact, a star-nosed mole has come... Oh, my battery's running low. A star-nosed mole has comb-like claws to spread it through... Oh. There we go. A star-nosed mole has comb-like claws to spread oil through its hair. That makes it that makes its coat waterproof. That's important since it lives in damp tunnels. If you had star-nosed mole hair, your hair would stay put whatever direction you comb it. So wouldn't that be cool on crazy hair days? Wild animal hair could be cool for a while, but you don't use your hair to stay afloat or confuse predators. You don't need your hair to change with the seasons, be a helmet, or lie flat in every direction. And you'll never defend yourself with your hair no matter what. So if you could keep wild animal hair for more than a day, which kind would be right for you? Luckily, you don't have to choose. The hair that grows on top of your head may look wild from time to time, but it will always be people hair. It will be what you need to protect your head from heat, chills, and bumps and make you look your best when it's clean and brushed. So I hope you all have enjoyed my story of what if you had animal hair. Bye. Be good. Do something kind for somebody. Be nice.